Welcome to Stim Nola's Thursday Live Sessions. Normally you would see Dr. Mackey up here, um, but he actually has to give a speech out of town. So I will be doing today's introduction. My name is Lamaya Hall. I'm the operations coordinator here at Stim Nola. I've been with Stim Nola about five years. Um, I have my BS in biology from Xavier um, and my master's of public health from Xavier as well. And right now I am actually in the um, application process for medical school. So before we um, begin today, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the importance of STEM. I'm gonna talk to you about today's topic and then I'm gonna show you a really cool robot. So the importance of STEM, it's really important for us to learn about STEM because we have things like humanoid robots, right? Um, where they can do all the actions that human can do and they can produce all of the things and the work that human can do, right? So the only way to defeat these robots is we have to um, become the scientist or the technologist or whatever we need to be in order to control these robots and to be um, in that place where we can, um, you know, make sure the robot is uh, working and functioning properly. Also, any other, not just necessarily a robot, anything. A lot of things are moving up um, with the different technologies as well. So STEM is very important in our everyday lives. Um, I'm going to show you guys a robot a little later because I have a really cool windmill set up in front of me. Um, I'm going to do go over this first. Um, so today we have a windmill. Actually, I forgot to talk about STEM NOLA. STEM NOLA, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we are um, a nonprofit organization started by our CEO, Dr. Calvin Mackey, um, a former Tulane um, professor. So STEM NOLA started about seven or eight years ago, literally out of his garage. His kids wanted to do hands-on experiments to teach them the science, the, science topic, the science topics that they were learning in school. And it got to a point where they're, his kids are like, dad, like we need to, you know, my friends wanna learn, my friends wanna do this too. And so literally that's how STEM NOLA was formed. Um, out of Dr. Calvin Mackey's garage, um, empowered by his sons. And now we are here to help you guys and to teach you guys um, and excite you guys about STEM. So let's talk about our windmill um, setup. So right here, we have a big windmill. You see this big blue thing on the back right here? What is this? This is a part of the generator, right? So your windmills have a generator. This is what's going to create that electrical current um, that's going to flow into the neighborhood or whatever you're um, trying to power. We also have these blades, our windmill blades. These are very important and the angle in which they're rotated is very important so that they can catch the, op um, the best, the, so they can catch as much wind as possible. Um, so this right here, this is our windmill. The, these are our blades for our windmill. Um, we have our generator and then we have our neighborhood here. So this housing grid is basically what your neighborhood looks like, right? So it's powered um, usually by like a transformer or something like that. But say your neighborhood ran off of wind power. So your uh, the transformer would be connected to some um, type of system, you know, that gets the electricity from that windmill straight to your houses and this would power your houses. So let's see, I'm gonna show you guys what the houses look like powered on just with batteries. And then I'm gonna show you guys what the houses look like powered on with our windmill. So this would be like if we got our basic electricity, um, how we normally get it now. So as you can see, our lights light up really bright. Um, our neighborhood, everybody's lights are on and that our batteries work as that transformer, right? So let's see if we can get that same amount um, of current with our windmill turned on. So remember, we have our blades that are gonna spin. It's gonna generate, um, it's gonna make the generator begin to work. That's gonna create um, a current. That current's gonna flow into our houses and turn our houses on. So let's turn on this windmill and let's see what happens. Turn on our fan. So our fan is gonna function as our wind today. So as you can see, our houses are still shining. Our lights are still on. Everybody has power. So the great thing about wind is it's something that 
it's never gonna, you're never gonna get rid of it, right? You're never gonna use it up. Um, that's something that we call a renewable energy source. Um, so it's what something that's what they call alternative energy as well. Same with solar. If we had solar panels here with a, um, with a, and stuck it outside in the sun, these houses would light up as well. You've seen solar panels on people's houses, but you have not, you've never seen, probably seen a windmill outside of someone's house powering it on. Um, they use windmills for bigger, they, it's normally like a wind farm. Um, so it's multiple fans, uh, windmills out there and they generate a lot of electricity. Um, so this is also a windmill Stimnola has. We use this windmill um, for our third through 12th students. Um, and they actually, when we have our wind day, they learn about wind. Um, they actually get to test wind speed and stuff like that um, and play with these big windmills. And then they end up creating their own windmill that'll work and it'll power um, on a small LED light that's in the house. So let's talk about our robot, our humanoid, Alpha. So Alpha, I'm trying to get this off the table. All right. So Alpha here is our humanoid robot. He is, um, he's produced by our partner, UV Tech. It's one of the largest robotic companies um, in the world. So Alpha is a humanoid robot. This robot basically can do anything a human can do, right? So these robots are actually beginning to take the place of actual human bodies, not this exact robot, but humanoid robots are beginning to take the place of human bodies in um, manufacturing companies and uh, places that produce and manufacture different goods. Because guess what? This robot can't get tired. It can malfunction. Um, which is why, which is why it's important for us to learn STEM so that we're able to fix these robots so that we're not out of a job. Um, this robot can work holidays. It can work overnight. It can do anything that you can do. This robot, um, can even do push-ups. Look at him with the one arm push-up. So as you can see, physically, this robot can do anything a human can do. This robot can also dance. I forgot how to do the real dance. I don't remember it. Um, so yes, this is, this is why it's important in the 21st century to train your kids. Um, Dr. Mackey likes to say to train them from the neck up instead of the neck down. Physically, this robot can do anything that you can do. Um, mentally, it can't because the robot has to be told what to do. So you can be that person telling this robot what to do, controlling this robot. So that's the importance of STEM and that's the importance of our um, Thursday sessions to learn so that we can see the different fields that are out there um, for us in our future. So today for our live session, we have our great college intern, Holly Griffin, um, and she is going to come take you through a couple of really cool wind experiments. But before we do that, I'm actually going to um, go over the people that send in pictures. Remember, if you have pictures, send them into webinar at stemnola.com. Um, our first person is Kayla Taylor from Polt Sulphur, Louisiana. This is Kayla and her rocket. That rocket looks good, Kayla. I hope it was able to launch. Our next um, group of students is, are from Ghana. Um, thank you guys for tuning in every week, every Thursday. You guys have been great, um, really paying attention, and we love it. We are hope to send you a STEM box soon. All right, so Holly's going to take it away. Thank you, guys. Um, these experiments are really cool and really fun, and I love them. All right. Hello, guys. Hey, I am Holly Griffin, and I have been working with STEM NOLA for about almost two years now. And I'm actually a student at the University of New Orleans, and I'm studying to be a teacher in elementary education. So I'm pretty excited about today because actually what we're doing today is something that I'm learning in school about, um, about wind and wind energy. So I'm extremely excited about it because I've been doing some of these activities, and now I get to do it with y'all. So 
What we're going to do first is go over our agenda, talk about the things that we're going to be doing today and make sure we got all the materials, address the questions we're going to do, address the goals, the reason why we're here, and we are going to have some fun. So, all right, first order of business, let's go over this agenda and make sure that we know what we're doing today. It is going to be us going over some vocabulary terms. It is going to be us going over our goals and objectives and our activity questions. And we are going to be making a wind sock and a wind spinner. Those are two activities that we're going to be making today. So hopefully you have all the materials that you need. And then we're going to come back to those. All right. So the experiments that we're going to be doing today is wind sock and it's wind spinner. So hopefully you have your materials. If not, I'm sure we can gather some stuff in our house to hurry up and get it done real quick. And we are going to be going over the activity questions and then giving you the answers. So I'm going to give you the questions before time and I'm going to see if you're paying attention and test you if you know the terms and what we're talking about. Okay. So first order of business, let's go over those terms. We're going to be talking about four big things today. And you probably heard Lamaya talk about at least two of these so far. And then I'll introduce two other ones to you. So the big reason why we're here is we're talking about wind and wind is the flow of gases and natural air moving all around. It's something that we can't see, but we can feel it for sure. Sometimes it's super windy and sometimes it's so windy, it pushes us out of the way. Sometimes it's so strong that it, you know, we feel it during a hurricane where it's 74 mile per hour winds and above. And we just had one recently here where there's some wind that did some damage. I know parts of my fence got knocked down. So we know wind is super powerful. It is extremely powerful and we know that it's rushes of high pressure sometimes to low pressure. And we are have some instruments too that help us see the measurement of wind. It helps us um, be able to know different patterns, different uh, speeds, all kinds of different things for wind. Um, so we're gonna talk about a vane and an anemometer. The vane is something that you've probably seen before. It's basically, it's almost like a decorative piece and it's got a rooster on it most of the time. And it's an arrow and it tells us the direction that the wind's coming from. So if the wind is coming from the north, then we would know that's a northerly wind. If it was coming from the south, like for south us is the Gulf of Mexico. So if it was coming from the south, it'd be a southerly wind. So it tells us what direction it's coming from. And typically a vane is hooked up to an anemometer. An anemometer is an instrument that it basically helps us measure the wind speed. So usually it's something that has these discs um, and they have almost like a cup-like shake, a semicircle. But depending on the anemometers, they can be different and range different. Sometimes they have three, sometimes they have four little discs and they basically turn and they help us um, know the wind speed. So sometimes it can be turning really slow. It's like a 13 mile per hour day like it was yesterday. It was nice and breezy, but then sometimes if it picks up winds, it's whirling super, super fast. And it tells us exactly a direct measurement of how fast the wind's going. All right, and then renewable energy. That's our fourth one. And you heard Lamaya talk about that one. And basically the power of wind is super, well, this isn't on right now, but if it was, it'd be spinning. And if it would be really cool that we can get electricity from wind, that's awesome. We can also do it with solar energy and we have wind energy. So renewable energy is something that it doesn't run out. It's a natural resource, meaning that we don't have to dig for it. We don't have to really look for it. It's already there. It's something that we use every single day. Sunlight, air, wind, these are renewable things that we constantly have, we're never going to run out of. So we can use wind in order to create electricity. And that is pretty awesome. It's not something that we have to pay for. It's there. So energy source that's not used up. That's what we're talking about. So we have a question for you right there. You can go ahead and try to answer. Heavy winds can cause what? Can it cause your foot to get hot? Can it cause you to fly if it was so windy that you'd be able to fly? You know, hmm, maybe momentarily, who knows? Or a tornado, we know tornadoes are a weather system. They are something that's very powerful, I'll say that. All right, and we'll get you to put those in and see how many of you answer the question correctly. All right. So we know that heavy winds can be caused by tornadoes. And you know what? Somebody said me to fly. And you know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to disprove that right at this moment because I think maybe momentarily can. Who knows? Winds are extremely powerful. They can flip cars over. So I'm sure they can pick you up off the ground if necessary. But for you to fly away up here, I don't think, though, that's like anti-gravity. We're not dealing with that today. So our objectives today is the goal is the reason why we're here. And basically the reason we're here is you're going to be able to understand wind, vane, anemometer, and renewable energy. You're going to know those terms and you're going to be able to take it and apply it to what we're doing today. Okay. And that you're going to apply it to the experiment. And so you're going to perform an experiment as well, or basically it's more of an activity 
And you're going to perform this and be able to discuss how wind, maybe an anemometer and a vein and renewable energy relates to what we're doing today. Okay, so hopefully I'll have your materials. Put mine out and we're going to go ahead and address those questions that we are doing today. But first, you're going to answer the question that's on your screen and it's what are we building today? So let's see if you're paying attention and then let's see if you know what we're building today. Hopefully you do. You should have your materials with you. So hopefully you know. I'm confident that you do. So let's see. <laughs> All right. I think most of y'all are almost there. All right. And yes, obviously we are doing a wind sock and we are doing a wind spinner. So good job, guys. Y'all know exactly what we are doing. Okay. So put this over here because I'm actually going to need it. We're going to go over those questions of the day real quick. And we have three questions and I'm confident that y'all will be able to get it. So let's see if um, we can go over them real quick. So what it is, is three questions. What type of instrument tells us what direction the wind is blowing? So we discussed this. So you probably already know these answers, but I just want you to keep these questions in the forefront of your mind so that you absolutely know you're 100% sure you get an A at the end. You're going to do great. All right. What type of instrument tells us what direction the wind is blowing? Then what type of instrument tells us how fast the wind is blowing? tells us the speed basically. And then what type of energy source is wind? All right, so these are the questions. Remember, keep these in the forefront of your mind so that you can answer them at the end and get them all correct, okay? So those are our questions. We're gonna come back to those, like I said at the end, but for right now, we are gonna go ahead and get started with our activity. And what we are going to build is something called a wind sock. That's our first order of business. So I'm gonna go over the materials with you and see if you have those real quick, and then I'll go over kind of the science behind it and the whole, you know, reason why we're here, wind. So materials, you're going to need a sheet of paper, and I'm using construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, you can use a loose leaf if you want, poster board even. If you want, that's a stronger material. But I'm going to go ahead and use construction paper. You are going to need some crayons or some markers or any kind of decoration that you want to use, crayons or markers, colored pencils, anything like that. Possibly, I have a Sharpie, but just like a dark marker, something that can help you. Um, well, actually, you know what? I take it back, guys. We don't need this for this right now. We need that for the wind spinner. You might need some glue, though. I have a glue stick. You can use regular wet glue or you can use a glue stick. Definitely going to need some tape. I've got two just in case you never know. So I've got my tape with me. And then you are also going to need some colorful pieces of paper. This is a streamer technically, but if you don't have this, you can definitely maybe use some construction paper added too, but you want something that's going to be able to flow really easily. So this is really something cool. If you don't have this, maybe you can even use string. You can get really creative and try to find something else, but streamers are kind of the best thing or tissue paper. Maybe if you have some tissue paper that you use for gifts, you can use that as well. But we want something that'll be able to flow really easily in the wind. All right, and I'll put those aside and... You are also going to need your string. So it doesn't need to be this long. I've got some colorful strings so y'all can see it, but you want some string basically so you can tie it to wherever you need to tie it to. All right, like if you're gonna tie it to a tree outside, if you're gonna tie it to a part of your house, just something somewhere you wanna be able to hang it from somewhere or tie it to something, okay? So I think that's all of our materials. We're gonna go ahead and while you're gathering your materials, I'm gonna go ahead and go over wind and the science behind this activity. So wind we know, depending on its strength, can be either a breeze or a gale, a storm or a hurricane. And that's something based off of the Beaufort wind scale. And basically with that, it tells you kind of if something's going maybe 15 miles per hour, but between 90 miles per hour wind, that might be more of a breeze, a high breeze though. But if something was like a hurricane, we address it, that'd be 74 miles per hour wind or above. It could be 150 mile per hour winds, which is insane. It's super, super fast and can do a lot of damage, unfortunately. So maybe that's when whoever did that one and said you can fly, maybe that's when you might be flying. You don't want to though, it's a extremely heavy winds. So that's something that that's based off. It tells us what kind of wind we're dealing with, but based on how fast it's going. And the fast usually that wind goes, usually it carries more force, more strength. It can be incredibly strong. And so the science behind this wind sock is basically it tells us kind of how hard the wind's going. And places like airports use this so they can know if it's safe to fly or not. They have wind socks out there, but it's a bit different. They're almost shaped like a cone and they catch the wind. And it tells them how hard the wind's going. And it can also detect wind patterns where it gets it's like gust of winds. So what we're doing today is maybe not as scientific as a regular wind sock, but basically it's gonna be decorative, it's gonna be cool, and we can test the wind patterns with what we're doing. 
So the first order of business, guys, hopefully you have all your materials with you, is going to be taking our sheet of paper and we're gonna punch some holes in there. So also, I think I forgot to mention it, you will need a hole puncher. If you don't have a hole puncher, you can definitely very carefully use some scissors. There's no need these for later too. And maybe where I'm gonna punch holes, you can kind of just bend your paper a little bit and then you can cut a small little hole in it. And then that will give you a hole because you just really need it just to tie the strings. But a hole puncher makes it super easy. If you don't have it though, that's okay. Just use your scissors. So what we are going to do is I'm going to take my hole puncher and punch my holes at the top. It doesn't need to be right at the top, but just kind of at the top. And I'm probably gonna keep them about, let's see, put mine here. I think I'm gonna keep it about like three inches apart, I think is good. All right, not perfect, but that's okay. It'll still look good, I believe so. And so something like that, you just want those two holes. And again, if you don't have that hole puncher, just kind of gently pinch that paper like this. And then you'll just kind of cut a small little slit through it and it'll give you a hole when you open it up. And you'll be able to just push a string through. And that's really the only reason why we need these holes. So you just need to be able to push a string through. And you can test it. If your string goes right through that hole, you are good. All righty. So now that we've got that step done, the next order of business is we are going to create our shape. Or before I move on to that, so sorry, y'all can decorate it this time. So I'll give you some time to decorate if you want. You can put something on there. You don't have to get super crazy, but you can add kind of whatever you want to it. Um, let's see. I think I might do, hmm, what should I do? Maybe a leaf. I'll do a few leaves real quick. All right. And you can kind of do whatever you want to. I'm just going to add a few leaves just because it's fall, Thanksgiving next week, you know, not going to get too crazy, but y'all can definitely decorate if you want, but I'm just going to do this just for kicks and giggles. And I think one of my leaves look like a bean, but that's okay. Alrighty. All right. One more. So I put some leaves on, like I said, they kind of look like beans with stems, but that's okay. And so really what we want to do is you can decorate, but just make sure y'all are paying attention to these steps so that you know how to build your windsock. So what you do is you take it and whichever side your decorations are on, keep that side out in the front and you are going to turn it to where those holes kind of meet each other. And mine don't quite meet, but I'll just punch out another hole and that's fine. But really you want this circular shape and you want to have a nice size circumference around so you can fit all your streamers. So a circle about that big, if you can see something like that, I think that works out well. I'm going to have to punch another hole. And if you have to do the same, that's no problem. Probably should have tested this out and punched it that way, but I didn't. That's okay. So what you do to in order to keep this shape is you can use some glue to reinforce it or you can use tape. You can use both. I'm actually going to use glue and I'm going to use tape just so I can make sure that it withstands the power of the wind. So in order to use the glue, just put some glue kind of along the outside of the paper. So I'm going to put it about right here. And I have a glue stick, but if you have regular glue, just put some dots and then kind of spread it a bit. Tape is really what I'm counting on, but I just want to use the glue just in case as well. So I put just enough glue. I might actually put a little more because I think I'm going to turn it, make it a little wider. All right. So I put glue about that wide of the way. And then I'm going to go ahead, create my circular shape and then just kind of press it on. If I do this and put it on my arm, it works that way better. All right. There we go. But I really want to use tape just to make sure that it stays that way. So you can use just like three long pieces of tape or you can use short pieces of tape. Whatever you think works out best. If I can just break this tape, why is it so tough? Jeez Louise. All righty. And I did three long pieces of tape. 
And so now I got my circular shape. Again, kind of a circumference about yay big, if you can see that. Will work out just fine. And you want your decorations to be out in the front. And I may not have to punch another hole, but we will, let's see. I think I will. I'm just gonna punch out another hole. All right. There we go. So I punched out holes just so they're kind of facing each other, horizontal. But this is what you should have so far. Circumference about this big. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. And I'm definitely gonna use tape for these. We're gonna add our colorful streamers. So this is the fun part. This is the part that makes it look really cool. And this is what really allows us to be able to test the wind pattern and see where the wind's blowing, what's it doing, where's it going. All right, so you can use glue if you want to, but I think that I'm going to go ahead and use tape just because this tape works really well. All right, and in order to do that, you see the streamer's pretty long. And if y'all don't have them cut out, I would say this is definitely longer than a foot. It's probably maybe like 14, 15 inches. And if you wanna get crazy, you can make them super, super long or you can make them short. But I think um, I wouldn't go any shorter than 12 inches, definitely, because you really want them to be long so you can see what the wind's doing. And the longer, the better. It looks really cool once it's outside and you see, it's at, you see it in action, basically. So you, you want them long. So I'd say about, yeah, 14, 15 inches. That's a good size for it. All right, you can use as many as you want or you can use, you know, only a few if you want. I think four at least would be good, but I think I'm probably gonna put on like seven. I like a lot of colorful streamers on mine. So in order to do that, I'm gonna put a piece of tape right across, do it like horizontally. And I might even do two pieces of tape. And if you really want to, you can use glue. You can add a little bit of glue to it on the side that's gonna stick to. We're gonna put it actually inside of this. It's gonna go inside here. So if you want, you can add a little glue where you're gonna face it on and then put another piece of tape just to reinforce it to really make sure that it's gonna stay in there. Okay. All right. And so since mine, like I said, I think it's maybe about 14 inches. I put it just enough in there, just a little bit of the way, about like an inch, an inch and a half, cause I really want my streamer, I want most of it to be out here. I wanna be able to see it go. So I'm going to add some pieces of tape kind of on the side to inside just to make sure that it's staying on because when that wind picks up, I mean, if it's 74 mile per hour winds though, you might have to kiss your windsock goodbye. You may not see it again. But if it's like a nice breezy day like it was yesterday and kind of today, then you really want to see that windsock, but you want those these streamers to stay in. So... We'll go ahead and do that. So I use about three pieces of tape to keep one in. So now what we're gonna do is just go ahead and put the rest in. And you can choose your color arrangement. I kinda like keeping true to the rainbow. So I think that I might do that. And I'm curious to see what kind of colors y'all use and decorations you use. So definitely I can't wait to see them. I hope y'all send in pictures. And remember, if you do have pictures, to send them into webinar at stimnola.com. And we'll show you that again later for sure. So you can actually have that email but I just wanna remind y'all that I wanna see your wind spinners. I wanna see them and I wanna see your wind socks. Alrighty. And if you want to too, you can actually apply the tape to your streamers before you put it in. So I'll just put kind of one, two, three on it. And then I can just go ahead and pop it in. And it's okay if they overlap as well too. If you wanna put a lot in, like you wanna try to fit 10, you go ahead and you try. I believe in you. It may look kind of crazy at first, but when it's blown in the wind, it will be beautiful. It will be so nice. All right. Like I said, I might put seven, we'll see, who knows. All right. Cause I wanted to kind of keep true to the rainbow. So I might have to move this. All right. And like I said, this isn't necessarily a professional wind sock because wind socks are shaped a little differently and usually they catch the wind and you can see it. It's a cone and it closes in at the end and you can see how it's moving. But this is something a little different. It's not gonna catch the wind right here. We're gonna catch the wind with our streamers and we're gonna be able to see how it moves and blows and goes. So, all right. And again, like I said, if y'all don't have those streamers, then you can just go ahead and use maybe some tissue paper, see if your mom has any leftover from any baby showers, birthday parties, any gifts that they've had to prep recently, and see if you have some tissue paper. Or I know Christmas is coming up and 
I almost bought some Christmas bags early, but I didn't do it because it's Thanksgiving season. I didn't want to be early. So we need to appreciate Thanksgiving as well. And I don't skip ahead, but all right. So I'm putting my orange one in. I may not get to seven. I may just do five to be perfectly honest. All right. And I'll put a yellow one in there. All right. Hopefully this is coming along well. I'm really curious to see what y'all look like and I can't wait to see where you hang it up at. I'm not sure. I'm going to hang it up here. But I might make one with my niece this upcoming weekend and we might hang it on a tree. She has tons of trees out in her backyard. And she has birdhouses everywhere and putting a windspurn out there would be really cool because it gets windy over there sometimes. All right, so you see how it's coming along so far. I only have four in, but this looks really cool. I want to add maybe just like one more just so I can have another color in there and put something here. But it's going to look really, really cool. And I'll show you how it works as well with our fan. All right. And I ran out of tape. I got some more tape. All right. So. And tape works really well, like I said, because it will keep it. And if you feel like you're using too much tape, that's okay. You want it to stay in there. You want it to be strong. Who knows if we'll get a wind gust that's like 25 miles per hour and our poor little wind sock wouldn't be able to handle it. But if we put a lot of tape in, it should be able to handle it. All right, so I think that that is sufficient and I think that that is good. I hope y'all like it. I like it. I think it's good. But okay, so our final touch for this is we are gonna add our string and that's what's gonna help us keep our windsock in. So that's the reason why we punched out those holes. My string's a little long, as you can see, it's extremely long. So I think I'm gonna cut it because I don't really need that much string just for today's purpose. But if you wanna make it long, it just depends on where you're hanging it. So if you plan on hanging it somewhere, like maybe a tree in your backyard, or you plan on hanging it to something um, maybe outside of your house, um, you can go maybe just wait and not tie it right now, but you can push the string through and I'll show you, just push it through kind of, let me see, push it in one of the circles and then you can catch it with your fingers, pull it through and then push it through that other circle and then just catch it. Cause usually I don't catch the string and it falls out and I have to do it all over again. And it makes me extremely upset. But you want it to be like this. So if you're gonna hang it from a tree, maybe you don't wanna tie it right now. And wherever you hang it from, you can go and tie it later. But I am actually, I'll show you. You can tie it right now if you just wanna hook it onto something. But if you're gonna tie it like to a tree and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tie mine right here. Then you go ahead and place it where you want it. And I'm going to basically triple knot it. You can double knot it, triple knot it, quadruple knot it, whatever you feel is best. If you just go ahead and do a, what? A five knot, that's Pinta, I think. Goodness gracious, not sure how you would say that. But you can do seven knots if you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Like I said, I'm gonna do three. Cause I want a super strong knot, you know what? I'm doing four. There we go. Okay, so I have my little fancy windsock right here. I'm proud of it. There we go. So I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is turn on my fan to generate some wind, and we're gonna see how this thing blows and how it goes. So, all right, you ready? I hope so. Five, four, three, two, one. Ugh. Ooh, I'm gonna start off gently. See if it does. See, wind is very powerful, guys. Be very careful with what you're doing. So. There we go. Okay, I'm going to hold it in place because it's flying. All right. Look at that sucker go. See, that's why I recommended using a lot of tape. Because if you had a windstorm outside and it looked like this, you would be able to withstand it. So here's some maybe gentle, some gentle wind. It's not so gentle. But you see how powerful the wind gets and you want your windsock to be able to withstand it. So thank goodness we used a bunch of tape because we want our windsock to be able to withstand that. 
So that's why also you triple knot it, quadruple knot it, seven, ten knots, whatever you feel is best because the wind is crazy and it can pick up very fast and be very, very strong as we saw. But basically, usually it looks something like this on a nice windy day, depending where you hang it. Our fan isn't natural wind. It's not a renewable energy source. This is not renewable. But that's kind of what it would look like. So, alrighty, that is our wind sock and our powerful example of wind. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over and hang it up right next to me. And we can go ahead and get started with our next activity, if I can get this open. But the next one, guys, is going to be our wind spinner. It is a wind spiral also. But it's something that spins in the wind, or at least we design it so it looks really cool when it does spin in the wind. It looks like a spiral. And that's what we're going to be making today. It's something super easy. And usually you see these in stores sometimes, like in a garden store. You'll see it go for a nice pretty penny. But we're just going to use paper plates today. And we're going to make something really cool with at-home activities. Because that's what STEM can be. We can take regular stuff like paper plates. And we can just make something really beautiful out of it. So one of my lovely colleagues already decorated a plate for me. And they put these fancy, fancy decorations on. But what you need, guys, is you are going to need a paper plate for your materials. You're going to need a paper plate. That's the big, big thing that you need. A regular paper plate, not styrofoam. So if you have styrofoam, it might not work out that well. You can try and see, but paper is really what we want to be dealing with because that is just a moldable shape kind of for what we're doing today. Styrofoam is a little tricky. It might rip really easy. So just be careful. Paper plate is really what we want. And if you don't have a plate, maybe you have like a poster board or something that can also work and just cut it in a circle. So, but if you do have a paper plate, that's great. Um, and you will also need a pencil or a Sharpie. And that's what I was holding earlier. I'm going to use a Sharpie. And that's kind of to make these spirals because we can need to outline like a cinnamon roll spiral basically so you can cut out your wind spiral. But I'll put my Sharpie on it so you can see what I'm talking about in a little bit. You're going to need scissors. You are going to need your crayons, your color pencils, or your markers. Or you can get super crafty like my colleague Kivandra did. She put this construction paper on and put these nice little pom-poms on. And it looks really cute. You can put stickers. You can put all kinds of stuff on. You can put glitter. Whatever you're feeling, you go crazy with it because you want it to be beautiful. It's going to be in your yard, so go ahead. And you're going to need string as well so that it can hang up somewhere because we're going to hang this up as well. So while you're gathering your materials, I'm going to go ahead and go over wind again, and then I'm going to go over the science behind this one. So again, with wind, do you all know what wind is? I hope you do because I'm going to test you on it later. Wind is basically that natural air and its gas is just moving around all around. It's that natural air and it moves, like I said, generally horizontally. And it's something, again, we can't see, but we can feel the effects of it. We can't see wind, but we can see what wind can do. And we see that wind picks up leaves sometimes. We see that wind makes the trees sway. It even makes trash flow around because sometimes trash is in the streets and it's very upsetting. But we just see like a Fritos bag just flying across our face and it's crazy. It depends on the day. It depends if it's a breeze or a gale. And then the science behind our wind spiral is basically this kind of helps us pick up on weather patterns as well. So how hard the wind is blowing. So if we have just a nice gentle when we get our spin, our spinner, it's going to spiral down like this. And if we see just a nice gentle, we know it's probably a breeze. But if it's kind of picking up and blowing this way, it's a gale. And if it flew out of your yard, you might be in a hurricane. Who knows? It just hopefully not. But our wind spiral is kind of more decorative, but it also helps us pick up on wind patterns. So it's pretty cool. All right. So I think we're going to get into it. So hopefully you have all your materials. And what I'm going to show you first is you are going to make your wind spiral. So your plate probably doesn't look like mine. You are going to want uh, your plate, however it looks, but you want your either poster board or your plate. And we're, what we're going to do is start in the middle and we're going to make this cinnamon roll swirl. And we want to give ourselves some nice space. So if you don't want to start just yet, that's fine. And you kind of want to see this spiral. You can definitely wait and see. So. All right. It's a nice space in between. And I'd say it's probably like an inch apart from each other as you start to go out. And you can see it's kind of that cinnamon roll swirl. And I'm going to keep going. It's like a nice seashell, or I like to say cinnamon roll swirl. I like cinnamon rolls a lot. And that's pretty much what we want. Is this nice 
cinnamon roll swirl. And that is the line that we're going to cut along. All right. And then eventually you're going to get to the point where you come to the end. You don't want to keep going because then it's not really going to work. But that cinnamon roll, it's going to come out, it's going to come out, go to the outer edge, and then it's going to come to a point or a seashell swirl. All righty. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get to the cutting. Okay, so when we go to cut it, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the outside of it. So take it kind of slow. This is probably the toughest part about this because the rest is really just decoration purpose after this. So what we're going to do is cut along that line. So you're going to start and like I said, take it slow if you need to because you want it to look really cool. So I'm going to take mine nice and slow because I want my spiral to look just as good as the one my colleague made. You're going to see her. She made another one and it's a finished product and it looks really cute. I like it a lot. So. All right. And it's really cool because you can see what a plate can do. You didn't think that a plate would be able to be this long, but we're going to prove you wrong. It can. It can look very interesting. Better than the kind you buy at the store. That's my opinion, at least. So. All righty. Almost there. And if you notice that maybe your lines are getting a little too close to each other, always just readjust. So if you feel like they're really thin, just take it and move it outside kind of. So you can make your lines a little thicker because you don't want those thin lines. All right, and I think, yes. So basically this is kind of what we're aiming for, this snake-like plate. So we had this as our start, if I can get to it. It's just a regular old ordinary paper plate. I wouldn't eat off of this one because it's got glue and all kinds of stuff on it. But you can take it and it becomes this snake-like spiral. And I love it. It looks super, super cool. I like it. I might even take it home and hang it up. Who knows? I don't know. But this is the one that my colleague Kivandra made. And she made this one. I'm going to use this one because it's got kind of that rainbow edge. And I like that it's got the different colors. And when it spins, it's going to look really, really cool. So hopefully you are here not now, and if you're not and you're still cutting, don't worry, take your time. I'm just gonna show you basically how it's supposed to work. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use my string. And again, I think this string is a little long for me, but like I said, if you're gonna be hanging it up from maybe a tree or you're gonna be hanging it up from um, maybe the cover over your patio or something, you may need a really long string, so that's fine. Get long string, I'm gonna cut mine. Just cause I don't really need long string for today's purpose. So, oh, and a very important step. How are we gonna hang up the string? How are we gonna put it on our spinner? You need to cut a hole, goodness gracious. So in order to do that, guys, I have a hole in this one, but I'll show you real quick. If you have that hole puncher, you can use a hole puncher and just give yourself a nice easy hole and it's easy to do. But if you don't have a hole puncher and you're working with scissors like me, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that middle part the middle part of your cinnamon roll, which is the best part of the cinnamon roll. And you are going to kind of bend it in half. Give yourself enough space on the edge. You can see that. I took it and I bent it in half. And you're going to just take your scissors and gently cut it. Make sure you don't cut your finger. Be very careful. Move your fingers away. And what you're going to do is kind of clip it. All right. Ooh. And I think, well, I actually cut mine in half. No big deal. If you did cut yours in half, you can make a new one. You can do it maybe on the outside. I'm gonna use some tape. Not that one, because I'm out of tape. So. All right. Let's get some tape. And adjust it. And then I have my little hole where I can kind of put my string. But like I said, I'm going to use this one as my finished product. So I have this pre-punched hole right here. Well, it's not punched, but I got it with the scissors. And so you want that. And basically what I'm going to do is feed my string through. Just like the windsock, but this one maybe be a little trickier since the hole is a little tinier. So you can just push it through and then grab it from the other end. 
And then once you've got it, make sure you don't lose it. You don't want it to fall through, so grab both sides. And you've got this, this beautiful wind spiral. So I'm gonna show you on this one. And again, if you don't wanna pre-tie your knot, if you're gonna hang it up outside or you're gonna hang it somewhere where you need to hang it like this and tie it over, don't tie it right now. But if you've got something where you can just kind of hook it on, then you can tie yours right now. So like I said, we want it to be super sturdy because the wind can be super, super strong. You know, it can pick up at times and have gusts that are very powerful. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna do four knots because that's what I'm comfortable with. That's what I think I wanna do. And if you feel for some reason you cannot tie knots, I know it took me a while to be able to master tying knots like this. Just ask maybe an adult for help or maybe an older sibling. Maybe they can help you if it's a little too tough. So there we go. I've got my nice, beautiful wind spiral. At least I think it's beautiful. So you can see it's kind of, if I, I can kind of swirl it already and it looks really cool. So we just basically a paper plate before and now it's this beautiful wind spiral and I like it. So we're gonna put our wind back in power. I'm gonna start off kind of gentle because the first time was a little crazy and we made a wind storm. So I'll let you see it in action in five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see. Might have to adjust it. There we go. All right. And that's kind of that wind spiral. And it looks really cool. And basically with the wind spiral, it's something too, it can tell you the pressure of the wind. So if it's going to the right, you see it spinning to the right, that means that the pressure is dropping. And if it's going to the left, that means that the pressure is increasing. And so it's really, ooh, and it picked up our wind sock. Goodness gracious. So it's pretty, pretty fascinating. This can tell you the pressure of the wind, which you may have not known. So ours is going to, what is that? It's going to the right. So our pressure is actually decreasing, increasing. That's not one of our questions, but I think it's actually decreasing. And what's happening is it's spiraling. And it kind of looks like it's gonna maybe go down or like it's gonna start to extend, but it never does. It just keeps the same rate. But that's what's so cool about it is it looks like it's gonna start spinning down and spiraling like ice cream and just keep going. And it doesn't, obviously. It's not gonna grow because of the wind. But then let's see if it can withstand some powerful wind. Okay. It's struggling a little bit, but it's still spinning. That's the cool part. And then we have, let's see if it can pick up our wind sock. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we have today made a wind spiral and a wind sock that can basically withstand the power of a hurricane. Not really, if it really happened, it might fly away, but thank goodness hurricane season is almost over and we can just enjoy Thanksgiving and all the holidays to come, Christmas, New Year's, we got a lot going on, a lot's happening. But thank y'all so very much. I had a good time making these super simple but fun and effective STEM activities because it tells us basically wind patterns and wind pressure, but it also looks really beautiful hanging up outside or inside if you want. So thank you again. And I'm Holly Griffin and I had so much fun with y'all today. Please, oh please. Oh my gosh, I'm about to go. I forgot about our questions. I was just so confident they all knew the answers. So, but I'm sure you will, but we're gonna test you on it first. So the questions of the day, guys, we talked about them earlier, but I want to see if y'all know the answers. I'm more than sure y'all do. But the first one, and it seems like one person already got it. Let's see if y'all can get it. What type of instrument tells us the direction the wind is blowing? So remember, it tells us the direction that the wind is going in. We talked about it way earlier. The direction, that's the key word. So if I want to know that it's going, if it's a northerly wind, or if I want to know if it's a southerly wind, I want to know where that wind's coming from. What's going to tell us that? Give you all a couple more seconds. All right, and we'll see. So it's close. So we had thermometer, we had speedometer, and we had a vane. A thermometer is something that tells the temperature. Think thermal. That's basically dealing with temperature. Speedometer, the key word in that is speed that tells us how fast something's going but the vein that is what's attached to our next instrument and it tells us what direction the wind's going and so vein was the correct answer guys i know that one might have been a little tricky but that's okay the vein is really the direction so the next one guys is what type of instrument tells us how fast the wind is going okay so how fast something's going basically the speed of it what is the speed so remember we talked about it earlier it's a fancy funny word 
And you don't hear it often, but when you hear it, you'll probably know it after this. So what is it? It was one of our keywords. It's how fast the wind's going. So think. It's going to be fast. All right, we'll give y'all maybe like 10 more seconds to answer it and see. All right. All right, guys, and you all got this one correct. It is an anemometer. So if y'all can say anemometer, it's a kind of funny word, but when you say it, you hopefully should be able to remember it from now on, and now you know an anemometer and a vein, very fancy words, you know it. Anemometer thinks speed, and a vein always think the direction that the wind's going in, and usually they're attached to each other. So the last but not least is what type of energy source is wind? All right, what type of energy? And we said it's really cool that we can take the energy that the wind gives us and we can use that to generate electricity. I knocked over my little wind thing, but that's okay. We'll make a new one later. That wind's very powerful, so that's why we made super sturdy wind socks and wind spirals so it can withstand the power of wind. So yes, guys, you got that one right. Our energy source is renewable. It is a re oh, it's a renewable source, so basically we're never going to run out of it. It's not non-renewable, like some of the things we can always grab from it. It's always going to happen. We're going to get that wind. It's a natural source of energy, which is awesome. We can use it to make electricity. So now, guys, that's kind of the end of our program today. And so hopefully you were able to make your wind sock and you were able to make your wind spiral. And if you have any additional questions, like maybe you want to know some more about wind, you can go ahead and put that in the chat. All right. You can put that in the chat and maybe ask us any questions, or if you want some questions, you can send it along maybe with the pictures that you send us. We really want to see those pictures, and you'll send that at webinar, webinar at stemnola.com. We want to see where you hang it from, maybe see it even in action. If it's a windy day tomorrow, I'd love to see those pictures. So please, please send those, and maybe you can be on our little STEM presentation as well, and we can see your picture. So thank you all again so much. I'm Holly Griffin. I wish I could see you all in person, but I'm very glad that we get to do these. And not in person, but virtually. So thank you all again. I'm going to have Lamaya come back up and answer any questions y'all may have. Have a great, wonderful day and a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Holly, for that beautiful presentation hmm. about when. Are there any questions? We good? Okay, cool. So please join us next week, um, December 3rd, 4 p.m. again. We will be doing technology um, with some of our cyber.org friends. So um, please join us next week. Also, upcoming events. We have STEM Gremlin. Um, so if you are in the Gremlin area, Shreveport area, Alexandria area, please um, visit us at stemnola.com to sign up um, under our registration. For December 5th, we will be doing buoyancy and density. And if you can't make it and you're not in the Gremlin area, STEM NOLA will be hosting um, our own STEM Saturday. We'll be bo doing buoyancy and density as well. And that will be December 12th um, at 10 a.m. So also we have STEM Baton Rouge. If you're in the Baton Rouge area, STEM Baton Rouge, that is uh, December 12th as well. That event, you guys will be doing friction. So you'll be building a hovercraft, um, learning about friction, things like that. Um, Houston with the Alliant Group, December 19th, we're doing force in motion. So we're building our foam cars. Um, they're going to do some real cool force in motion activities. So please visit our website to see all of these different events that we have up. Um, and make sure, pay attention to which event that you're registering for to make sure you get on the right registration. And please make sure you complete the registration. When you complete the registration, there will be a confirmation email that comes to your email saying that you are fully registered. Um, make sure you get that email. If you don't get it, then that means you're not fully registered. So you may have missed something. Um, so make sure to join us on any of those four upcoming events in December. Um, thank you guys for joining our Thursday session. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good weekend.